from the Edge Ice Arena in Bensonville, we are live for the A-High Red Varsity semifinals right here on the SHL Network, a j &M Media production. Good evening, everybody, and welcome into the broadcast alongside Rudy Hodgson and Wes Anderson. I am Max Anderson, and along with our all-star technical crew, we'll have all the live game action for you here from the Edge. Rudy, a, dream, a fourth matchup for these two teams. Nutrier won the first three. Fighter coming in the underdog, looking to pull the upset. Absolutely, and you know, we talked about it just a couple moments ago on the uh, SHL Network Instagram page. If you are St. Vider, you want to catch lightning in a bottle. You know that all these games have been tightly contested. You know that these two teams, when they meet up, there's some fireworks. They're going to rely on guys like Brock Hare to really get the job done in net. But don't, don't expect the St. Vider team to go away quietly. They are a tough team. They belong here. They're here for a reason. For more on how St. Vider is going to look to pull the upset tonight, we're going to send down to ice level for Wes Anderson standing by with St. Vider head coach Tim Benz. Wes. West. West. Apologize, having some technical difficulties with our wireless mic, so we're going to cut away from Tim Benz. But Rudy, I'm sure what the message Tim Benz it was is going to be preaching to his team: we got to get out, we got to get out fast. Absolutely. I mean, hot starts in a winner-take-all one game are so important. This first goal is probably going to dictate the pace, right? If you're St. Vider, you got to come off to a hot start. The first five minutes are probably the most important five minutes of the entire game because you want to set a precedence. It's really important for them to get off to a good start. I expect that from them. They came out flying just a couple days ago. Expect that today. Meanwhile, Nutrier has been wire to wire, the best team in the state all season long. They won the SHL regular season, won the SHL playoffs, find them back here in the semifinals once again looking for that trip to the United Center for more on how they'll try to punch that ticket. We'll send it down to Wes Anderson for standing by with your head coach Adam Jarrett. Coach, you're, you're about to punch, you could punch your ticket in a back-to-back -back state championships. Talk about what this senior leadership has meant to this team all season. Yeah, great leaders. We've gone by our seniors all year. Got a great group of captains that have, you know, mostly all been with us for two years. They know what it's like to, you know, what you have to do to get there. They're fired up. They've been great leaders, great kids. Now, you, you, you beat this fire team three times in this season already. What do you need to do tonight to have the fourth one? Yeah, you know, like I said before, this whole playoff thing started. Every team's great. Sorry, we cut the end of that interview as well. Working through our wireless mic issues. We'll hopefully get that fixed here in just a moment. But talking about that senior leadership, a team looking to go back-to-back -back state championships, not an easy thing, especially in a competitive high school league like it is here in Illinois. Oh, absolutely. But the Trevians are right where they feel they belong, and they're not done yet. I mean, for them, this is where they're supposed to be every year. They are contending every year. They are one of the best teams in Illinois. They're going to try to prove that again today as we look at the bracket. I mean, these two teams, three periods away from punching their ticket to the UC. That's how they got here. We got ourselves a really good one here, Max. Like you see on your screen here, of course, St. Vider, Nutrier, our game one tonight. Later on tonight, we'll have York and St. Ignatius, two lower seeds and upset in the quarterfinals. We'll get to them more as the night goes along. We mentioned the three wins for Nutrier against St. Vider this year. All the way back on October 28th, there was a three to one win. On November 17th, a five to two win. And finally, the final regular season game of the season for Nutrier is a Whomping six to nothing win, but St. Vider playing their best hockey of the year here in the playoffs. Yeah, that's exactly what you want your players to speak, especially your top players. You know, Forrest, Sibitrot, those guys have been dynamite all season long, but they're starting to peak at the right times, getting timely goals when they need them, and you know, hopefully they can rely on those guys tonight. The buzzer sounds. We are done with pregame warmups, and with that, we'll send it over to our public address announcer, Sam Schwartz.
Festivities are wrapped up. One of these two teams, Rudy, are going to find themselves with a ticket to the United Center after 54 minutes. Absolutely, and I mean, what an environment. Barn is starting to pack up. Both teams de definitely want it. I mean, there's an energy here, and it all leads to the UC. We can't wait, Max. Of course, New Trier also playing in a semifinal basketball game right now down in Champaign. They lost, so might be a little bit thinner crowd than you might expect for New Trier. I'm sure many students and fans went down to Champaign for that, but still, this home side, this broadcast side that we're on is quite full. 
As people continue to trickle in here, tough traffic night, nasty night outside. It's about to get hot in here. Absolutely. I mean, it wasn't a pretty drive in. I mean, Wes Anderson can attest to it. He was the one uh, behind the sticks getting it done. But, I mean, it's different in here, right? This is what it's all about. You know what I mean? There's a lot at stake. You got one team that knows that they belong here. You got one team that's kind of fighting for every shift. So that's what playoff hockey is all about. Great one coming up. Live from the Edge Ice Arena in Bensonville. So much history at this rink for high school hockey. So many great moments over the years. Of course, you think about St. Vider's overtime winner in 2002, or 2022, I should say, over this new Trier team. Mentioned it at the outset. They got out to a 3 to nothing lead. The Trier came all the way back. And then it was a Neely, excuse me, it was a Patrick Neary, OT game winner, 10 minutes out into OT that put Vider into the state championship. They're looking for some similar magic. 17 minutes under the up on the clock, and we are underway from the edge. Game one of two of the Red Varsity semifinals. On the back end is Thomas Speck. He drops the puck in deep quickly onto the stick of Jack Savino. Savino reverses flow. Finds Pedraja up the far wall, but kept in at the point by Speck. Speck will put the puck below. In games like this, you like to see a first shift. You can skate, maybe get a hit under your belt, get some of those nerves out of the way and play hockey. That's exactly why Nutley is out there. He wears the A. He leads by example, definitely physical. Expect him to come out hot early. Nutley on the back check. Checks Randall off the puck. Kuffel now trying to pin him against the boards. Randall still with the puck. Cares all the way up the far half wall. Now Wolf below the goal. Drops it below, leaves it for Huber. Centering pass, now a follow-up chance. Big point-blank save early for Herr. Good first test there for Herr. He stands his ground, makes the save. Didn't know where the rebound went. we get an icing. That misses everybody and will go the length of the ice for icing. Just 67 seconds gone here in the first period, and Nutria already with a good chance on that. Yeah, I mean, Nutria kind of on the, on the worst end there, the physicality battle, but they were able to break through. I mean, a centering chance that didn't really look like there was going to be much behind it, but they were able to get a shot off on the second try. Draw to come to the right of Brock Hare. Hare with a spectacular playoff so far, averaging just a three quarters of a goal a game and a over 95% save percentage. We're going to get the game's first penalty, and it's going to be a slash against St. Vider. Players can't believe it. To be honest with you, I was looking at Hare's stats as I read it. Yeah, I don't know if this is the penalty you want to really call this early. I mean, I know you want to probably set a precedent, so I don't know if, uh, Wes, you caught it, but it looked like he just lost his stick in the corner, and maybe there was enough there. Yeah, guys, hard from my vantage point. I'm down here on the new trip bench, but Nolan lost his stick. As you mentioned in that play, I think that's what forced the refs to make that call and give New Trier their first power play of the night. Now, hold on a moment. We'll see if they're going to actually call it. Nobody stepped into the penalty box yet. It was Pepe LeBoy on his way to the box. And now they're going to say no penalty. Unless I'm not sure if Adam Cheris is going to get an explanation down on the bench, but I don't know that I've ever seen that. Usually a penalty gets called, a penalty gets called. You guys, uh, he just got confirmation from the ref. His stick got stuck in the board, so good no call by the refs there and keep this thing five Especially on five. Especially in a semifinal game, good communication from the referees to make sure that we don't get any funny business to get us started. Aiden Nolan on the far half. Well, he had a hat trick the last two the time these two teams got together in that six to nothing win for Nutrier. But semifinal hockey, do not anticipate that kind of blowout here tonight. St. Vider played one of their best hockey games of the season against Glenbrook North to get to this point. Matthew Voris was a huge part of it. Now Pepe LeBoy along the near half wall, chips it along, gets it onto the stick of Jacob Voris. Voris carries into the zone, tries to get into the slot. Following him is LeBoy from a sharp angle, gets a deflection from Sibitrov, but it deflects to the far half wall. On comes Brendan Hennigan, one of the captains for this new cheer team, has the puck taken off his stick. Cleared forward and settles on the Zach Hippish. Hibbish leaves for Fisk, who fires it in on air, calmly gloves it, takes a defensive zone draw. Quickly, you want to talk about a 1A, 1B. That's exactly what New Trier has in net. Tonight it's Wyatt Schmidt. You just saw him make his first save of the evening. Wes, you know, a couple goalies on the broadcast. You know, you got two very capable guys that can make saves. Tonight it's Schmidt that gets the call. Easy for head coach Adam Chair to really make that call. Both goalies so capable. Centering pass in the slot. Chong can't get a shot off. 
Now in transition comes Vider. Hong up the right side, fires it into Schmidt's glove and talking to Adam Cheris. Wes, Rudy, we've talked to him all season long. He has gone one in, one in for each goaltender all season long. He's not changing that now, so Schmidt gets the semifinal start. Something I know the man that's standing right in front of me, Drew Dirtoff, loves to hear that. If this new true team is able to make it to the UC, I think we are expect to see him in that for the Trevians. Drew Dirtoff, the senior, Wyatt Schmidt, the junior, just a Treasure chest of spoils in net does New Trier have, but they can keep their goaltenders that fresh all season long as snapshot from just in front of the New Trier bench once again into the glove of Schmidt. Always nice when you have that kind of insurance back there, huh? When you got two guys that you can rely on. You know, you know it's a long season, a lot of tired legs. Nice to have one guy that you can rely on and then a 1B that's just as capable. Hershrit not able to win the draw. Kuffel gets it back at the far point. Here's a shot just wide of the net of Schmidt. Pakocha tried to keep it in. Instead, it's Luke Chu the other way. Hershrit up the slot. Hershrit deflects it, but gets saved easily by Hare. Here's Fisk at the point, looking for a deflection, but blocked in front. It's one of the things that St. Vider did so well in their quarterfinal game. They blocked. Had to have been over a dozen shots, maybe close to 20 off the sticks of Glenbrook North players. That is something they're going to have to repeat here tonight. Now we're going to get a whistle as I believe the puck got stuck on the boards. A couple of weird things so far here tonight, fellas. Semifinal hockey for you. Guys, I don't think I've ever seen that. The puck actually got stuck under the door where the Zamboni comes onto the ice. Both players are a little awestruck. Wasn't really sure what was going on, but got on the rugs <laughs> to blow that down and get a whistle here. That's the edge for you. And then talk about it. Chris Dubiel talked about during, I believe it was one of the girls' semifinal games, just weird bounces in this place. Pedraja in the high slot. Just a flick of the wrist from Brock Hare to keep it out. But Chris Dubiel talked about it on one of his broadcasts during the semifinals that the edge is just known as weird bounces off of weird corners and stanchions and different things going on. Always kind of goofy bounces here at the edge. Well, it's safe to say this is uh, definitely going to be a different atmosphere when they go to the United Center in a couple of days. I mean, don't think any uh, pucks are going to be going under Zamboni entrances. <laughs> Otherwise, the Hawks would be in trouble. Now we're going to get the first penalty of the game, but it's going to go against New Trier. It's going to be a trip. Right down in front of us, touching the puck is Fisk. And that power play for St. Vider going to get a chance to get things started. Eighth in the SHL was the St. Vider power play, but at 20.2%, they usually say anything 20% or better in high school hockey is a good number, but in the SHL, that was only good for eighth. Yeah, I mean, eighth place, don't tell that to this uh, St. Vider team. They, they probably don't really care right now. They just see a door open and they want to strike. And I mean, 20% is pretty solid at any level, but you know that kind of shows just how strong the power plays are here in the SHL. Face off one by Hoffman, but dragged out of the zone as Nutley has the puck. Nutley chips it ahead, just past Nolan. Nolan able to collect and fires it off the scoreboard. And that'll head back into the Trier bench, or excuse me, New Trier defensive zone back break for the Trevians. Yeah, I mean, you just talked about Chris Dubiel saying this place is a little weird. Well, let's get a little weirder. We got pucks going under Zamboni entrances. We got sticks getting stuck in doors, and now we got that low uh, scoreboard playing a factor. <laughs> Face off again, won by the Trevians, but able to keep it in are the Lions. Calling for a hand pass was Friel, not called, as it's kept in at the point by Sibitroff. Sibitroff along the half wall to LeBoy. Drops it below, but that'll be cleared by the Trevians. Minute 20 left on the power play. A lot of time left, but you kind of see what St. Vider's trying to cook up. A little sustains offensive zone pressure, but Nutrier, man, they, they know how to suffocate and really close out those options. Here we go. Off this pickpocket in Aiden. Nolan leads it two on one. Has Randall on his wing. Nolan back door. Randall can't get it to go. Good stick there from Sibitrot to break up that pass. Jacob Voris makes sure that gets out. Now Randall will waste some time in his own defensive zone. Fired deep by Hibbish. 70 seconds gone on the power play. Vider not much of a look yet. Up the far wall comes Sibitrov, able to get it deep. He gets tripped up, but doesn't get a call. Fired off the glass and cleared once more by Nutrier. Rink wide, Nutley tries to pass it to himself off the boards, able to complete it. 
Lunau now below the goal, gets it right back to Nutley, centering pass, looking for a deflection in the slot. Hoffman just a half a step late. High hit from the stick, no call. Nolan shorthanded once more, tries the same move around O'Neill, but not able to finish it. Sure doesn't feel like St. Vitus on the power play right now. Best chances have come to the team in green. Here's Kuffel with some speed and space up the left side, looking for an outlet. Drops it to Hoffman along the near half wall and goes out of the zone as that's the end of the power play. And Speck will just drop a tee. Weren't able to get themselves established there. Maybe a little momentum shift. Stretch past Savino, finds Curry right at the blue line, but Matthew Voris does a great job cutting his angle off. Now bodies coming together, trying to sort through it in the corner. Curry wins the puck, drops it deep. Speck collects in the corner, checked by John Olson. Now four bodies come together, sandwiched in the corner, trying to pry it free. A pass just behind the stick of Dolan. John Dolan, what a story he is. Scored his very first varsity goal of his life in the quarterfinals. It was a huge one. It was the first one of the game for St. Viners. And he pulled at least the seeding upset. Let's say going into that game, it was pretty even matchup, but they were the lower seed and they were able to knock off the Spartans. Nah, like you said, what a story that was and, and what a rallying point that was really for St. Vider. I mean, you get a good look at the chance here from uh, New Trier, but what a story and what a moment. And they're hoping that momentum can carry to tonight. Face off to come to the left of Hare. Brock Hare just been so solid in net for the St. Vider team. Now John point blank chance, back door, Chu trying to put it home, he scores! Luke Chu on the back door makes it one to nothing, New Trier. Heavy miscue, not what the Lions wanted, but exactly what the Trevians needed. They get off to that hot start, kill all the momentum in the other way. Just a broken play, back door tap in, I'm sure we'll get a better look at it, but that's what the Trevians needed, that's what the Trevians get. And Luke Chu had the puck on the back door wide open for what felt like an eternity. Just had to corral. He almost didn't. Hare almost got to it. Missed it by just a couple of inches. Oh, man. Brock Hare almost made an incredible save there. But Chu able to get it past him, make it one to nothing. New Trier. Got to give credit to how he saved the play with his foot. That pass was just a little too hot. Now turned over once more, trying to get it to Wolf in the slot, but deflects. Back to the stick of Yasin. Now Hippish in the corner. Pedraha trying to play it on and said Nutley steps in front of it. Nutley, he's got a step trying to turn the corner on Hippish. He's taken down to the ice, no call. Back to the point, Speck slaps it towards the front of the net, but nobody there for St. Viter. Here comes Huber in transition. Huber two on two, shoots, block shot by Kuffel. And Kuffel collects. And if Huber doesn't touch that, might be Wolf on a breakaway. Already seen two or three block shots from St. Vider. Mentioned that number's going to have to be in the way of 15 or 20 by the end of this game. Randall with a nice move. Kick save. Nolan backdoor. Block shot hung. Off the crossbar on the shot from the slot. That close to a 2 to nothing game for Nutrier. Here's Randall. Randall kicks it. Nolan able to just keep it into the zone. Now point blank, Hennigan's shot just misses. Top left shelf, Nutrier buzzing now, looking for their second goal. Finally knocked out of the zone by Hong. Linesman says no icing. Munau able to collect below the goal. Trying to get it back to the point. He's able to, but that puck just leaked out of the zone as the stick of Finn Hogan. Wasn't able to keep it in, Wes. Guys, the Lions able to take a deep breath, hemmed it in their zone after that goal. Nutria, all types of offensive aggression there in the offensive zone. I know the Lions are happy to finally get a line change here. Really hemming in on Brock Hare, the great right pad save just before this whistle. The Lions desperately need to find something in the offensive end here. Yeah, Wes, we just got a really good look at that shot that just went off the iron. I mean, Brock Hare's got to be feeling all that pressure so far, just one nothing. Savino in his own end, flips the puck forward. Gets it to Olsen. Puts the puck deep, Hare gets pressure, so he drops his glove on it. 
A little bit of hi, how are you from John Olson. Rudy, you can attest, the goalies hate that. Nice little snow shower is the last thing that Brock Herrera wants right now in this first period. I'll Plenty of those what. flurries outside right now. I'm sure Herrera could go without it. That is not a fun position to be in, I'll tell you that much. So far, it's been all Nutrier. Ryder with a couple of shots on net, but not much behind him, and Nutrier with the only goal. Just joining us on your Friday evening. Thank you for being with us here from the edge. Nutley brings in his own backhanded shot, deflects, and bounces, I believe, off the top of the cage. Fortunate for Nutrier that didn't fall into the net. Here's Kuffel as his hands tugged on, trying to make sure it gets out of the zone, delivers a huge hit on Wolf. David Wolf, one of the biggest players on the team. Here's Hoffman. His shot blocked it away by Schmidt. Kuffel volleys it forward. Now Wolf off the boards. Sprawling over was Pakocha to support. Now Sibitroff in the corner. And cleared by O'Neill. And that will go the length of the ice follow on chance from the slot. Stretch pass misses the stick of Sibitroff, and it'll be icing once again. West, we didn't have a great angle from our that puck that popped up. How close was that to falling in behind Schmidt? Guys, I think maybe two or three inches. O'Neill did a great job getting his stick on that second chance opportunity, but Schmidt did a good job also recovering over the right. Just so, such little space here tonight in the game with such bad attitude. Chong fires a shot off the draw. He whiffs on it, and Jacob Voris brings it forward for St. Vider. Hippish there to stop the puck, gets it once more. Tries to volley it to himself off the boards, not able to complete the pass, turned over. High slot, Voris shoots, big block shot from Shane Randall. It's a huge block there, way to extend the body and break up that chance. Voris had some good space in the slot there. He didn't even really see Wol or excuse me, Randall in the initial picture. I believe he sprawled out his legs and got it somewhere off his lower leg or thigh. Here's Chong. Looking for space, he's gonna drag to his backhand. Puts it out in front, puck just in front of the crease. Herstritt with a shot, follow one chance, two big saves from here to keep it one to nothing. Nutrier is living in the slot. Every puck is going to the middle and that's their bread and butter. That's how they're creating chaos. Credit to Hare for making two dandies, maybe a third. Extends that left leg, makes a great save. But you see what Nutria is trying to do, and St. Vider's got to make adjustments quick. Otherwise, it won't be long before they're making it 2 to 3 nothing. And there are three games against Nutria. Hare at 34 saves, 37 saves, and 25 saves. Nutria almost 2 to 1 outshot this St. Vider team in the regular season. We'll see what that brings tonight. With speed, here's a shot, block it away. Munau wasn't able to get there for the follow on chance for the Lions. Pacocha wait for it back at the point. Instead, played off the boards and out by Hennigan. Loftus able to get the puck up to Munau. Stick of fist sl slows it down just in time. Now Hennigan building up speed. He's one on three, but plays a pass to man. Pacocha comes over to support. Spun up the far wall, but kept in by Savino. Friel. Tosses it off the glass, but falls to the stick of Pacocha. Kept in at the point by Fisk. Gets a deflection in front from Hennigan, but Hare at a good positional save. Keeps it out. Guys, and you see a Hare on top of his crease. Both goalies so good in terms of technicality tonight. We saw just before that Schmidt with a great blocker save once again on top of his crease. It's going to be hard to beat these goaltenders tonight. Similar to what we saw with the new Trier goal and earlier here in the first period. It's got to be a broken player going harder than that as the Trivets have been doing all night. Hare not just top of his crease, but outside of his crease. Really aggressive out of the net. And it's 38 in blue for St. Vider. Now Kuffel. Passes to Nutley. Nutley trying to play it forward. He's quickly checked off the puck and cleared by the Trevians. Kuffel follows. He'll put the puck deep and give the Lions a chance on the forecheck. O'Neill pressures, loses an edge, but Nutley gets it in the far corner. Once again, not able to get possession, and John Curry gets it out. Seen Brock Hare cover the puck quite a bit. I feel like he's starting to sense a little bit of the tides turning. I mean, it's a tale of two teams. Right now, St. Vider is playing 
like they have all the energy in the world. At some point, that's going to crash, whereas New Trier is kind of playing more composed, playing their style, playing like a team that's been here before, whereas St. Vitor is just a little too energetic off the pop. Maybe they're making a couple miscues. And St. Vitor wants to bring the energy, but they also want to gum the game up. They want to slow things down. If this turns into a track beat, that certainly favors this New Trier side. That's what St. Vitor did so well against Glenbrook North as they slowed the game down. They did a great job blocking shots and finished their checks and really slowed the game up. We'll see what this brings here. Speck carries it all the way below the goal, leaves for Voris. Carried out now by the Trevians. With speed is Chong, waiting for Hippish to come up the slot. He tries to kick his skate out for a deflection, but it went all the way through. Now Pepe Leboy the third. He's able to take a hit, make sure that puck gets out. Would have been offsides if Connor Hurstra had touched the puck. Now a two-line pass as Voris off the touch. Sibitrot drops Leboy. Leboy winds up, shoots. Calm glove save from Wyatt Schmidt. I like the look. You know, you want to create some pressure, but if there's no bodies in front, that's an easy save all day, and you're kind of giving momentum to the netminder Schmidt. So you like the look, but not a lot on it. Experience the excitement of high school hockey at the United Center on Wednesday, March 13th, as the Amateur Hockey Association of Illinois and the Chicago Blackhawks proudly present the 2024 Illinois State High School Hockey Championships in partnership with Richard Group. Catch three thrilling championship matchups showcasing the talent, Illinois rising hockey stars. Secure your tickets now at blackhawks.com slash HS championships. Coming up on Wednesday, j &M Media and the SHL Network will have that call live from the UC. Girls game starting at 3.30. Combined varsity at 5.30. And then one of these two teams will take the ice right around 8.30. For New Trier, they're trying to make it back-to-back -back years for St. Vider, their last state Finals appearance back in 2022 right here at the Edge Ice Arena. Ultimately, it was Stevenson that won their first state championship in program history in that first year after the COVID year. So it wasn't at the United Center, but good to be back at the United Center second year in a row. Absolutely. I mean, what an environment. Last year was such a great event. Yeah, the teams love it. The families love it. The fans love it. Overall, a great experience. We can't wait to be back. Of course, Rudy will have the call of the combined game for play-by-play. -play. He'll join me and Wes for the Red Varsity call. Dylan Ward, Luke Jordan, and Anthony Pasquale will have the call for the girls game. So a real team effort. Voices you've heard all season long here on the SHL Network, bringing you the best of the best for the state championships. Loftus fires the puck around the boards. Savino slows it down, but falls the stick of Hong. Back to the point, Kuffel. Kuffel tries to get it across to Loftus. Active step from Nolan, make sure it wasn't crisp. Now Nolan carries out, gets it rink wide, Savino. Savino centering pass, looking for a deflection. Not able to get anything on it. Now Hong three on two. Moon out coming up the slot. Loftus as well, clean glove save from Wyatt Schmidt. And Rudy, another one of those opportunities. You mentioned on the, the chance before that for the Lions. Just not a lot of momentum behind that shot. Looked like was trying to possibly shoot that off the pass, but great on Schmidt to swallow that up and give no rebound. You know what I like about that save, though, Wes, is that that, that shot could have very easily been saved by the pads. Instead, he puts the glove down, maybe a little out of position to deny that rebound. Smart goaltending because he knew his team was outnumbered. At every level of hockey, obviously, rebound control important, but so much so in high school hockey, obviously not highest levels of goaltenders, right? We're still in high school. So the more you can limit those rebounds around the net, the better off you're going to be at any level, but especially in high school hockey. Oh, they're, they're, they're still raw. Now backdoor chance, Simitroff. Not sure if that was off the post. Our cameraman kind of right in that line of sight, but Connor Herstrick comes back for New Trier, tries a shot. Chong checking Pacocha. Now Chong trying to recover. 50 and 7 going at it behind the goal. Luke Chu comes away with it for the Trevians. Two reverses. He's going to toss it below. Kuffel there for St. Vider to win the puck. And he has his stick knocked out. That's going to be a slash against Connor Herstrit. He can't believe it. But you knock the stick out of somebody's hand, you're going to get called for slashing 10 out of 10. Not sure you can really argue that one, right, Wes? I mean, it's all day textbook slash. But I mean, this is exactly what St. Vider needs right now. Get that momentum back in their hands. 
Max, I want to see a little bit of a, a, our broadcaster's jinx there. You talk about how great Schmidt's been in terms of rebound control, and you know, less than five seconds later, gives up a juicy rebound, but able to recover well there. And St. Viter here, great chance, second power play of this first period, great chance to tie things up here as we go on to the first intermission. I want to give a shout out to Evan Ballard, who on the SHL Network Instagram correctly guessed it would be Luke Chu with the game's first goal. So shout out to Evan Ballard, big fan of the SHL. Here's a shot, Pat save. Second power play opportunity here from St. Viter. Shane Randall finds the puck. He swipes it all the way around the glass and down deep to Brock Herr. Shots on goal, nine to nine right now, but it's certainly been New Trier with the higher quality of opportunities. Vider has found a crossbar. There's Voris, top of the circle, shoots, and the shot swallowed up by Wyatt Schmidt. Stop me if you've heard it before. No traffic in front. I mean, he's if he can see it, he's going to stop it. That's been his MO all season long. I like what Sibitrop was trying to do there, trying to get a deflection, kind of change the angle up a little bit, but good composed save from Schmidt. First real chance there from Vider on the power play. Really good crowd filling in here. The side we're on almost completely filled. I'm sure as our cameras traverse the ice, you can see what's turning into a nice big crowd here on a Friday night. Nutley from the point gets a deflection from Hoffman in the slot, but goes over the crossbar. Now O'Neill tries to get a shot forward. Aiden Nolan able to knock it down. He'll try something shorthanded. He doesn't have numbers, so at the very least, he'll bring it forward. Eventually, Hoffman back to retrieve the puck for the Lions. Hoffman, cross ice, moon out. Up top, O'Neill. Top of the far circle, one time chance, but moon out not able to get anything on it. Cuffle pinned below the goal line by Hibbish. Comes free to moon out. Munau back to the point. Shot from O'Neill. Gets a deflection just wide of the post. Now a check in the corner. Bodies flying, sticks flying. So Trevian without a stick. Now a shot back door. Big save, Schmidt. Munau had some room, but took him a second to get the shot off. Randall without a stick now, like a soccer player just trying to kick the puck out of harm's way. Finally, Nolan's able to fire it deep. How about that save? Schmidt came to play, extends that left arm, gets a touch with the glove. Wes, you had a better angle. That does it for the second power play for St. Vider. Empty on the evening, 0 for 2. Matthew Voris skates around Olsen. He's able to get the puck deep. He's going to try to get his own dump. He loses an edge, not able to get it on the four check. Kept in by Speck, played up the half wall to Rice. Riders four check not quite dialed in like it normally is. Aiden Nolan looked like could have been interference against Speck, but we'll play on. But St. Vider bench not happy that Nolan wasn't called for interference, and frankly, I think it should have been right here in front of us. Speck nowhere near the puck, and now we're going to get a whistle, and it's going to be a penalty to go against Nutrier. Excuse me, a penalty to go against St. Vider. Power play for Nutrier, and Tim Benz wants an explanation. We'll see if. If it is a penalty, I believe the time just expired and the horn didn't go off. And then the, the ref had to blow the play down as a result. There was a little action in the corner, but I'm not sure if it led to a penalty. You are absolutely correct, <laughs> Rudy. I saw Wyatt Schmidt dart for the bench. Not realizing it was in the period. It's a broadcaster <laughs> mistake, I apologize. After one, Nutrier won. St. Vider nothing. Nutrier really had the better play there in the first part of the first, part of the first period. But Vider really came on the latter half of the period. Like I said a little earlier, Nutrier is playing like a team that's been here before, like a team that expects to win and expects to play on big stages, whereas St. Vider maybe rushing to get plays going, rushing to get shots on target, whereas, you know, you got to pick and choose your moments. You can't always just shoot because you have a lane. You know, I understand it's playoff hockey, but you still want to play composed. You still want to play your style of play. And this run and gun isn't always Vider's bread and butter. It's more the composed long game. We do see the trainer heading to the Vider bench, so we'll see if West can get some scoop. We'll take a quick timeout, catch our breath, come back with second period action here in just a moment. You're watching the A-High Red Varsity semifinals on the SHL Network.
Welcome back. Second period action about to get underway. The two teams switch sides. Brock Heron now to our left. Wyatt Schmidt to our right. One to nothing. New Trier leads. Got Wes Anderson down on the bench. Rudy Hodgson to my right. I am Max Anderson. Thank you so much for being with us here on game one of the A-High Red Varsity semifinals. Boris able to keep it in at the point for the moment, but eventually played out. And Speck in front of the new Trier bench collects. Nutley calmly off the boards. Good touch by O'Neill to get it deep. O'Neill cut off by Wolf. Savino coming in to put pressure on. Speck gets it at the point. Fires towards net, but off the shin boards of David Wolf. Shane Randall. Plays the puck. And we get a whistle. Guys, quick injury update. Jack Huffle took a nasty hit towards the end of the period. The bridge of his nose is cut a little bit. He's going to bandage up, and he should be back out there as soon as he gets all fixed up. Thank you for that, Wes. Huge part. Of course, top D-man for St. Viator. Multiple year varsity starter. He's part of that team back in 2022 to make a state championship. Here's Aiden Nolan. Good back check from Forrest. Takes the puck off his stick. And just outside the zone, Savino thought for a moment he might have gotten away with the puck. The linesman Johnny on the spot, blows it dead. He knew what he was doing. He was trying <laughs> to pull a fast one by everybody. And as soon as he crossed the blue line, he checked up a little bit. He knew what he did. So, so actually, you know, those intentional ones, I'm surprised they don't kind of move them more back. You know, sometimes they do that. But in this case, uh, not enough. Just outside the Viator zone, so Savino fires it deep, riding the rail the entire way off the blue strip. Back to collect Voris. Voris loses the puck in a dangerous area, but LeBoy there to support. Now turned over. LeBoy has to backtrack and get it from his below his own goal. Voris just going to be content to take an icing and swats it deep. Yeah, St. Vider a little reckless in their own zone. I mean, that's kind of how they gave up the first goal and almost how they gave up a second one in the first period. So they got to clean that up, get some clean breakouts going. But that's a little worrisome if you're uh, head coach Tim Ben seeing your team kind of struggle to get it out of their own zone. That's what they did such a good job of against GBN, really limiting dangerous chances, really frustrating that Spartan side all game long. Hennigan and Rice on the draw. Rice able to win it. Cuffle back out there for the Lions. Here's a shot from the point just wide off the stick of Zach Hippish. Sibitrov. Or excuse me, Trzinski, fouled now by Kuffel. Kuffel with some speed up the left side. Has a man coming up the slot. Good poke check from Wyatt Schmidt to take the puck away from Kuffel. Now streaking Aiden Nolan, but right there to slow it down. And with Sebastian Pacocha back the other way. Here's Dowlin below the goal. Can he make two goals in two games? Kuffel at the far point. Now Pacocha. He opts to send it deep. Not sure how that puck just stopped. I'm not sure if it took a funky bounce off the boards, but Nutrier's able to clear. Here's Pacocha. And he's for Vitaly Shrutinsky. Gets it up to Dowlin, who will fire it deep and go for a change. Four fresh bodies on the ice for the Lions. Yuhan Yasin co collects the puck. Now Friel in the slot, big save here. Brief bobble, but able to swallow it, take a defensive zone draw. That is a scary player to see streaking down the ice with a little bit of uh, you know space. Friel tees one up, but Hare fights it off with the shoulder and then doesn't give up a rebound. Good save from number 38. Ashton Friel, the leading goal scorer and tied for the team league in lead in points in the regular season for this new Trier side. Is that it? Not the guy you want to leave wide open in the slot. Thought he had some space, too. He could have maybe taken a couple strides. Draw one. Savino fires it forward wide of the net. Boris collects, throws it off the glass, and Fisk takes it at center ice. And now it was icing, so Fisk didn't get far enough before he sent that puck deep. So the icing. Guys, looked like Hare played that puck, though. Not sure why that would be called icing. Maybe intentional offside, but the Lions will get an offensive zone faceoff out of it. 
It's a good catch, partner. I thought the same thing. I mean, as soon as a netminder touches it, it should kind of cancel out the icing. So good catch, Wes. I agree. Not able to keep it in at the point was Matthew Voris. 77 and 7 on the back end for the Lions. Forward comes Loftus. Near circle, blocker it away, back door. The puck just jumps over the stick of Muno. Here's Herstritt. Herstritt draws to his backhand. Trying to pry it free as Chong gets it below the goal. Looking for something in the slot. Back door, Herstritt, but it was on his backhand instead of his forehand. Savino, sharp angle, pops up. And cool, calm, and collected hair gloves it. Rudy, a little windmill Wednesday here on a Friday. It's great <laughs> rebound control from both, both goaltenders. They've given up rebounds, but able to swallow up those uh, second chance opportunities pretty easily here this, tonight. What's most impressive, though, Wes, is that puck was already behind him. He saw it just pop up right next to his mask. He turns around, makes a sharp save. That is not the place where you want to give up a rebound in that blue paint. Not at all, but a confident goaltender able to get that second chance before there's any sticks that touch the puck. O'Neal and Wolf on the draw to the right of Hare, who's absolutely locked in to start this game. Draw one by the Trevian. Savino at the near point. Plays it down the near wall. Now Wolf avoids a check. He's going to get it back to the point. And Fisk. Now Hogan. Pop, puck pops out. Not able to get a stick on it where the Trevians. And Hoffman turns around. Fires it down ice. And at the last second, Schmidt sticks it out. Leg out, now it's a scuffle after the play. I don't necessarily begrudge the hustling Nutley. Schmidt didn't look like he was going to field that puck, and at the last second kind of reached his glove out. Max, that's one of those where you tell your players to play through the whistle. Kind of on the ref, too. A little bit of a late whistle as well. A little bit of indecisiveness on Schmidt. And couldn't tell who the Lions forward was that was going hard to the blue paint, but like you said, I don't blame him for going hard there and creating that traffic. Yeah, Sean Nutley, that was... Just a quarter of a step or a quarter of a stride, I should say, away from getting to that puck. Didn't find anything dirty about that play. We'll play on. I, I love netminders and I respect them, but when you come out last minute and kind of turn, you, you're kind of setting yourself up for disaster. You cannot discredit Nutria for defending their netminder, but you also can't blame Nutley for trying to make that play. It's just a little late decision making there from Schmidt. Especially with the way Vider has to play this game. They've got to play this game with their hair on fire, with the energy, try to get those dirty goals around the goal. You're going to see that all game long. Sibitrov back to couple. Gets a deflection from LeBoy, but it was off the target. Able to get the puck back. Blockered to Sibitrov. Far half all turns. Fires. And pad saved by Schmidt. Sends it to the corner. Randall up to Chong, but skips over his stick. Chong trying to win it back. Herstritt plays it forward for the Trevians. Turns, fires wide of the net. Was looking for somebody on the back end. Centering pass, but an active stick from Cuff will make sure that can't get done in the slot. We're going to get a high stick against St. Vider. Nutrier is going to head to the power play. Well, that's playoff hockey. I mean, they've taken the first two penalties, so it's only right that they get one back here. And after the little commotion a couple seconds ago on the other end, it seems like this is the refs just kind of trying to control the game, make sure nobody gets out of hand. Rudy, that's a great call, and I think the refs did a good job after the little skirmish, after Schmidt made a late decision to, to cover that puck just before the, the, the play happened, to let that play go. They could have called the penalty easily. They let the players play through it, but good on them here to even things up as we go into the second. Connor Sibitrop, the guilty party for the Lions on the high stick, and that Nutrier power play second all season long, 85, excuse me, 24.7% on the power play. David Wolf, Randall back at the point. Ryan Yassen swings across to Hennigan, shoots, blocked shot by Speck. Backdoor Randall turns, fires. His shot's blocked as well. Now Hennigan in the slot, shoots just wide of the net. Big rebound off the boards, but nobody from Nutrier could collect. Randall checked as he put the puck behind the goal. Fist tried to catch up. Hennigan's able to keep it in. For the moment, a spec shot Good goes right at Adam Cheris. <laughs> Took out his clipboard. You don't take out a coach's clipboard. <laughs> how, about, how about none of the Trevians getting in the way to save their coach? They, <laughs> they all steered clear of that one. <laughs> Adam Cheris not exactly thrilled with that clearance attempt. 
Missing his head by about a foot. I wonder we'll have to check in with miniature bench, make sure that dry race board's still working. Wolf wins the draw, gets it back to Yasin. Across to Randall. Right back to Yasin. Here's a shot, gets a deflection, but not on goal. Hennigan able to get the puck back, draws. Now turns, tries a stuff attempt, denied. Hennigan across to Yasin, pressured by Rice. Getting it back is Hennigan. He shoots, gets a deflection in front. Hare sprawling. Able to buy enough time not to get by him. Here's Randall, slot extended, shoots. Knocked down in front, puck still loose, trying to stuff it home. Now Hennigan, bodies all over the place, but can't get it to go. And Voris digs it out of the corner. Now just trying to get the puck out and able to get it deep was Kuffel. Brock Hare, fabulous. In a change, here's Hennigan, four on one. Hennigan shoots. Uh, getting a stick on it was Kuffel. And how meaningful Jack Kuffel is. It was a four on one, Rudy. And he just got a little piece of it, or else Hennigan might have had prime opportunity for number two. Period of the long change. I mean, that's kind of how they strike. They had some space, didn't strike. Aiden Nolan tripped up as he enters the zone. We get a whistle. It's going to be offside the call. Nick Schreer thought it was going to be a penalty. Instead, a neutral zone draw. We officially have a goalie battle. Guys, Brock Hare, two great saves on this or penalty kill. Excuse me, both goalies really doing their job in the penalty kill. We saw Weichmann earlier with a great glove save. Now Brock Hare checks in for the Lions. You know, and Fisk, probably if he could do it again, should have tried to stuff that home. He tried to go the wraparound and wasn't able to complete it. He had a, a moment there where he might have been able to stuff it home on that front side. And that's the game for you. He'll go back and Study that for sure, as that's the end of the power play for New Trier. Back to five on five hockey as Hibbish gets the puck below his goaltender. Sharp angle, trying to centering pass was Voris, not able to complete. LeBoy from the slot, follow one chance. Sibitroff fresh out of the box, not able to get a shot. Savino wanted a hooking call, not going to get it. Chong carries it on his backhand, carries it all the way back to the near wall. Adam Cheris wants a holding call. I think Rudy was, might have been signaling for a penalty as well. Here's Voris, high slot, shoots. Rebound given up, LeBoy shoots. Follow on save from Schmidt. So Wyatt Schmidt starting to come up big. Keep this game scoreless for Nutrier. Sibitroff had a step, but Hibbish cuts him off, takes the puck away. And volleys it quickly. Too many men on the ice. Should be the call. Don't see an arm go up. Blatant too many men on the ice. A break for Nutrier. Wow. Yikes. A couple of penalties that just go under the radar. One for both teams, so that at least at least they're And now the icing called. And Tim Benz is incensed over on the St. Vider bench. Guys, I don't blame him. I think I counted maybe seven Trevians on the ice when that, that four came on for the change. It's, very rational why this Lions bench is furious on that no penalty call. I mean, it was very obvious. Six, you called maybe even seven on the ice there, Wes. But Nutrier gets away with it. Here's Yasin at the point, drops it deep along the near half wall. Now centering pass, trying to stuff attempt. Olsen the follow on chance, and Hare just got a piece of it. Nutrier on the doorstep, but not able to get number two. Yasin back to collect for the Trevians. Dolan putting pressure on. Now three or four bodies come together. It's Dolan that's able to come away with it below the goal. Dolan able to keep it in for the moment. Almost a breakaway opportunity for the Trevians. Max DeGroote almost had the opportunity. That Hare able to deflect that to the corner. Olsen cut off by Voris. Follow on check from Olsen. That's going to be offsides against Nutrier. Well, right now, St. Viator almost near the halfway mark of this game, and they're kind of on their heels a little bit, right? I mean, if it wasn't for that miscue in the first period, it'd still be 0 0 because of the heroics of Hare, but this is kind of where you start to want to kind of want to start to see your team. Just take those steps forward and make the adjustments. So far, not a lot, but they're still in this game. Just about halfway gone here of the second period. Aiden O'Neill gets tossed out of the faceoff draw. Nutley will take it. 
cleanly won by Wolf. Air slows it down. Now Cuffel collects. He's getting pressure. Brock Hare already with 14 saves. Doing an excellent job here tonight. Keeping his team, he's had some crucial grade A saves so far tonight. Absolutely, and I mean, on both ends, I mean, there was a really good save here on the other end where, you know, uh, Schmidt had to be composed on the rebound, but same with Hare. I mean, he's had some toe saves that could very easily have gone in the back of the net. I mean, Tim Benz chose the right guy for the job tonight because he's been sharp. Saw it two years, or I should say last year, with York. Very much led to a state championship appearance on the back of their goaltender and a couple of key skaters. And how often do we say a hot goaltender can take you a long way in playoff hockey? Especially in a winner take all. Anything can happen. Randall pressured by Hoffman, brings it around the boards and out as Finn Hogan has to hustle back. Pedraja right on his case. Nutley back to support. Played up the wall to O'Neill. O'Neill, top of the near circle, fought off by Schmidt, pops straight up. Actually hit the lighting, else that would have fallen pretty close to right on top of Schmidt. It's going to stay in the new Trier zone. West. Guys, something interesting to note in SHL play, New Church Green only usually gives up about 20 shots per game. This Lions team just recorded their 19th of the game, just over halfway through the game. So something to keep in mind. They haven't translated to goals yet, but they've been doing a, doing a great job getting pucks on net and making White Schmidt's life difficult here tonight. You mentioned it just a couple of minutes ago, Rudy. New Trier in the season series outshot this Vider team almost 2-1. to one. That has not been the case so far tonight. Rice battles on the draw, still stuck. Herstra ties him up, gets some support from Hibish. Now Chong trying to skate past Voris. Chong up the slot, instead went back to Hibish. Chong not able to carry the puck out, or he might have had a three on two. Here's Stratinsky, backhands it towards, gets a rebound. Not able to put it home as Hong. Herstra in transition, as Chong coming up the slot, turns, fires, knocked down by Speck. Hong in the corner, gets hit hard as he gets rid of the puck, not able to get it out. Hibbish a shot, wider than that. Morris might have gotten a piece of it as it went by. Trachinski trying to force it out, instead kept in by Fisk. Fisk skates wide, sharp angle, centering past Chong. He shoots off the post! And Rice able to clear. Wow. Nearly 2-0 there. Just rings off the iron. But a great look, and again, a chance in the slot. Brock Hare taps that post, says thank you. As you goaltenders do it a little bit differently. Here's Fisk, centering pass. Boris able to steer it behind. Now Herstritt. Herstritt looking for some help as his teammates change. And taking a draw is Hare. See, even if they don't have anybody in front, they just throw the puck in the middle and watch the chaos ensue. You're getting a good look at that chance. That rings off the iron and you know a little bit of distance from that look, but point still stands. You see Adam Cheris living and dying with every moment. He knows that a one to nothing lead, the St. Vider team has been putting a lot of pressure on his net. He would love to see this expand to two to nothing. How important is insurance in a winner take all, right? I mean, sometimes, Two nothing feels like four or five nothing when it's a tightly contested game like this. Sibitroff with some speed and space up the right side, tries to draw to his forehand. Schmidt at the last second pokes it away. Trying a centering pass, but off the back of the goal and not into the slot as LeBoy intended. Kuffel fires it in. Savino evaluates, looks for a stretch pass, finds Nolan. It's going to be two on two. Oh, we've got a delayed penalty to our right. Nick Schreer going to head to the power play. Guys, Savino took a high hit behind the play. Can't tell which fighter player it is. You guys might have a better look from your angle. That's going to go to the box for boarding, but Nick is going to go on their second power play of the night. That's going to be Jacob Boris, the guilty party for St. Vider. New Trier back on the power play. And that's asking for trouble. We haven't talked about it yet tonight. 
But these four teams in the semifinals have been unbelievably good on the special teams, as you would expect in, high, in playoff hockey. But to put some numbers around it, only one power play goal given up by these four teams in the semifinals through a total of 12 games. Been really impressive stuff. Meanwhile, scoring power play goals at a really high clip, over 30% combined. Here's Hibbish. Friel, top of the near circle, back to Hibbish. Back door, redirect from Nolan, but not on target. Savino collects near half wall. Gets it across Hibbish. Hibbish waits, doesn't see an angle, still holding the puck. Swings it across to Friel. Friel shot, knocked down in front. Kuffel trying to fight. Chong able to come up with it. Big save here, and keeps it out. Here's Nolan, far circle, shoots, and blocked by Voris. Hoffman battles in the corner. Centering pass, Nolan on his backhand, tries to get it across to Savino. Still kept in, Lions cannot get the puck out. It's been over a minute. O'Neal along the near wall. Played up the boards and finally out into the neutral zone, but with the long change, Lions. Oh, Hoffman's gonna sneak out for a change. Here's Friel. Skates out wide, centering pass. Nolan tries backhand to Chong. Hare sprawling, he's out of his net. He sprawls, makes another save. Puck still loose and steered aside. Brock Hare continues to be outstanding in net for the Lions. I'm not sure if he got a touch, but that was miraculous if he did. It might have gone off his leg pad. Loftus short-handed. He looks, turns, fires, and Schmidt has to make a save. 15 to go on the power play for the Trevians. Guys, Ryan Loftus saved a goal. You wonder why that puck doesn't go in. He does a great job of collapsing to that near side post and gets a stick on that before that puck's able to go across the line. That's a great catch by you. We're seeing a replay now. Great call there as Loftus just at the last second. Or Sean probably would have had a wraparound goal. Oh. Not only was it Loftus, but Matthew Voris also coming back, gets a touch. Good things happen when you keep the stick on the ice. See it time and time again. Here's Hennigan with a head of steam. Hennigan carries into the zone. He'll carry it behind the goal. He's looking back at the point, has Randall. That's the end of the power play for Nutrier, back to five on five. Jacob Voris enters the play, centering pass. That deflects to the far wall. Randall shoulders a man off the puck, able to win it. Point blank chance, Wolf. Wolf, another backhand shot, and Harris swallows it up. Harris' rebound control has been exquisite so far, Rudy. That's great. I mean, but you're going to get a good look at it here. I mean, it, a little dicey here as he kicks it out with the blocker, but you see his left pad just leave the ice. You know, if you're a netminder, you kind of want to squeeze that up, and that could have very easily trickled 5 hole. It doesn't, it doesn't pay for it that time, but you got something, something to look out for. And that's expert goaltending, uh, a breakdown by you, Rudy. I saw the exact same thing. That's our goaltenders here on the SHL Network. Wes Anderson, Rudy Hodgson, bring you all those angles and tips. This high shot into the glove of hair. Wasn't on target, but he gloves it anyway. Well, well you know that they call Wes and I farmer's insurance, right? Well, we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. <laughs> How about it? I love it. Hey, no free ads, Rudy. <laughs> Speaking of free ads, experience the excitement of high school hockey at the United Center on Wednesday, March 13th, as the Amateur Hockey Association of Illinois and the Chicago Blackhawks proudly present the 2024 Illinois State High School Hockey Championships in partnership with Richard Group. Catch three thrilling championship matchups showcasing the talent of Illinois rising hockey stars. Secure your tickets now at blackhawks.com slash HS championships. Big hit right in front of the Viator bench. Puck pops into the new Trier bench. And we get a whistle. Big hit and then some friendly fire. Wolf almost takes out the uh, head of his assistant coach. Three nineteen remaining here in the second period. Fighter continues to grind. You see the shots on goal. Very even, and frankly, West, maybe Nutria a couple more high quality chances, but pretty even game. Yeah, I mean, that's what it's going to come down to. I mean, the, the shot the shot total might be really high for uh, St. Vider, but that's probably because a lot of the shots that they've gotten have been through no traffic at all. I mean, easy saves for Schmidt with the exception of maybe three or four that have been 10 bell saves. But on the other end, man, Brock Hare having a game to remember. St. Vider finds a way to pull this one away. Remember number 38 in Navy. Adam Cheris not thrilled with the officiating, not letting him make the final change. Referee says that 
was a little bit too late and able to get the change right away as they get the puck deep. Stretch pass, misses Munau, goes right back into the line zone. Final three minutes here of the second period. It was a new Trier goal with about seven minutes into the first period is our only of the game. And now Loftus is going to get called for a high hit. Elbowing going to be the call, and Chu wants a word with Loftus. Wes, you had a front row view, what do you think? Yeah, I don't know about that. That looked like a player trying to finish his check. Maybe the elbow came up a little bit high, but I thought that was clean all the way around. Yeah, not the call you really have to make right there. I mean, you, you kind of live and die on those. I personally don't make that call myself either, Wes, but... Uh, you know, it was a high hit. I mean, getting a chance to look at it. Kind of one of those you... It could go either way, you know. In a playoff game that's this tightly contested, I'm not sure if you have to make it. You know, maybe in the regular season, you know, you, you'd be a little more polished up about those. But, you know, I, I'm not I'm not wearing the stripes. I don't make the decisions. We just talk about them. <laughs> and whether or not we agree with them. Two minutes up on the clock, and St. Vider playing a dangerous game once again on the kill. Yasin keeps it in. Here's Hennigan. Cross ice, Randall shoots. Deflex just wide of the near post. And again, outside the near circle, up top, Yasin. Yasin fumbles the puck and going to be able to clear. Trying a breakaway opportunity. Here's Nutley. Nutley by himself. His forehand. He scores! Sean Nutley gets the shorty. It's one to one. How about it? What a finish. Dipsy Doodle. And he just tucks it in. It's a beautiful play. I mean, he slows it down, composed. And how about that? Sean Nutley, he scores big goals. That's all he does. When it matters the most, he shows up, and that's what you need. He does it again. Wes, what would you see? Rudy, perfect explanation. Just waits out. Schmidt deep to that glove hand side. He's able to wrap around that left pad. And, boys, we've got a game. It's 1-1 here in the second period. Nutley's fourth playoff goal. He had 20 points on the regular season, 10 goals, 10 assists. It is a hockey game one to one here at the end of the second period. Aiden Nolan shoots, somehow through a ton of traffic, finds the logo of SV, and squeezing it is hair. Now through all the madness, remember folks, 118 still left on the power play, and this Nutria team is no stranger to playing with uh, momentum teeter-tottering. So, I mean, look for them to try to uh, adjust quickly and get that momentum back in their favor. But how, about, how about this, Rudy? On the entire regular season, St. Vider had three shorthanded goals. In the playoffs, that's their third shorthanded goal. Wow. That will get it done. That will get you into a semifinal and maybe beyond. We'll see. Nolan, a little bit cavalier with the puck, able to collect. Chong below the goal, has it taken away, wrapped it around the boards by Voris and out. The other thing, we didn't even get a chance to talk about it, the crazy bounce that that puck took over two different new Trier sticks and just settled on Nutley. He had a break away from center ice in, and he finished it. Sometimes it takes a little puck luck. Now centering pass, Friel, backdoor Chong, backdoor chance. Maybe Friel a little bit too unselfish there as he's not able to get a shot off. Bibish goes far circle, Nolan. 30 seconds to go on the power play, centering. Hare able to drop a glove on it. Friel, high hit, and Tim Ben says, where's our call for that? That was the same hit. I agree, first and foremost, but back to the point you were making, Max, I mean, you saw it a little bit there after they scored. You know, maybe they're a little too cute at the blue line, especially when they don't realize that they're the last man. If, if, if they try that and then it leads the other way, they just make crucial mistakes. You can't do that at the blue line. Maybe a little too aggressive, the defenseman. Face off to the right of Hare and alertly jumps right on the puck. So we'll do it again. Guys, you talk about great defense thing to offense there. Nutley with a great poke at the top of the blue line there to really start that play. He flies the zone after, receives that pass, and he's able to bury it to make it 1-1. And cleared. 20 to go on the power play. Entering his new Trier, Chong gets it past Hare, centering pass, Chong 
into the slot, but nobody home. Hoffman's able to collect, clear it. That will do it for the power play of New Trier. Back to five on five are the Lions. Friel with some speed, can't control the puck at the blue line. Kuffel takes it away, volleys it off the boards, off of Nolan into the New Trier bench. So we're gonna come out into the neutral zone. A dream kill there for the Lions. I mean, that is exactly what the doctor ordered. Huge, you know, blue line presence. They get a bounce finally. They go the other way, they score, and then they stymie a really hot new Trier power play for over a minute and a half. That is how you get it done. That is how you win playoff games, Max. Mention the hot power play coming into this game. Five of 11 in the playoffs. That will get it done and get you into a semifinal. Herstritt deflects the puck. Referee says the stick was below the waist. Speck trying to steer out for St. Vider here in the final 25. Now a point blank chance just jumps over the stick of Curry. Sebetroff trying to collect at the blue line. He'll get it deep. He goes down a little bit too easy. Referee says play on. Three line pass is able to collect as Hurst Schritt skates into the high slot. Shoots, rebound given up. Forrest just there to deflect. Final couple of seconds, still scrambling. Backhand shot, what a save. I'm not sure if it was Hare or Voris, but it's one to one still. Brock Hare, take a bow. How about it? Extends that stick and gets a touch. You're gonna get a better look at it here. Oh baby, he sure does get a touch, Max. How about it? Number 38, dynamite. That kind of stuff just gets me going, Max. Woo, what that's an a beauty. Ending. What an ending to our second period. We've had two electric periods. It's a tie game. We head to a third period where one of these two teams we're going to lock in a trip to the United Center. Who will get it? You'll find out in just a couple of minutes right here on the SHL Network. Your home for the A-High Red Varsity State Playoffs. Max Anderson, Rudy Hodgson will take a break. Come back with third period action in just a couple of minutes.
Welcome back live. Third period action about to get underway. Live from the Edge Ice Arena in Bensonville. Semifinal number one, St. Vider and New Trier. It's one to one as we enter the third period. Vider with a late second period goal. And for more on how they'll look to get that go ahead goal, we'll send it down ice level. Tim Benz with Wes Anderson. Wes. Thanks, Max. Coach Sean Nelly gets you guys board. It's his third goal in these A high playoffs. Just talk about what he's meant to this team throughout the year. Yeah, he's meant a ton. I mean, he's a senior leader. He's got a letter on his jersey. He's been with us three year varsity player, right? So this is his last goal at it, and he wants to come out on top. You're 17 minutes away from punching your ticket to the UC. What do you need to do in this third period to get the job done? Obviously, clean up our D zone a little bit. There's been some scary stuff going on a little bit. So, you know, Brock's been bailing us out, but. Need to get on loose pucks, pick up sticks in our D zone, and then look to score off the rush. All right. Good luck in the third. Thank you. Guys, back up to you. Thank you, Wes. I think we would certainly echo that exact sentiment. There were some dicey moments in the defensive zone, some, some miscues, some turnovers, and maybe some sloppy clearances, but your best defender's got to be your goaltender, and that's been the case. Absolutely. And on the other end, I mean, Nutrier, they got everything to lose. They're the ones that are supposed to come out and put their foot down and, you know, win these kinds of games. So. This Lions team is a shot away, a save away, a play away from punching their ticket. This is the moment. This is what you play for. I'm expecting a really hot third here. So we got fresh ice. Teams will go back to their original sides here. And Rudy, one of these teams looking for that ticket to the United Center. Nutrier, they won that state championship two to nothing against one of the second games members. That's York. They'll take on St. Ignatius here in just about an hour following this game, but first, business to be settled here in the third. Yes, and right now, if you're new Trier, I mean, you had the recipe there at the end of the second period. You almost broke through, but you just have to beat Brock Herrer. I mean, you're getting chances in front. You're getting the puck to the slot. If you're new Trier, just stick to that recipe, stick to that formula. And for St. Vider, just make sure that the formula doesn't stick. So teams getting ready here down on the ice. Meanwhile, you talk about Nutrier's game. They really dominated much of that first period. Ryder really came back strong end of that first and really an even second period on the shots total. You see it on your screen, 23 to 22. This has been a very even game thus far. Third period action, trip to the United Center on the line here on the SHL Network. Right off the draw is gonna be icing. Go right back into the St. Vider defensive zone. For both, go ahead. For both of these teams, this is, this, this is what the moment is all about, right? I mean, we're, we're all glad that this is a tightly contested game. This is kind of what you wanted, right? So, I mean, you just got to love this kind of hockey. This is the atmosphere we're all looking for. Randall shot from the point, gets knocked down. Wolf trying to collect it outside the near circle. Wolf gets his stick between the skates of Speck, and it's going to be an early power play for St. Viator. Wow. That's exactly what St. Viator wants. I mean, you don't want Nutrier to come off the, uh, the hot start that we were talking about in the first five minutes. Now it's a chance for them to do it themselves. And special teams hasn't really been that much of a factor besides the shorthanded goal. We'll see if, uh, if St. Viator can kind of get it going on the other end when they're up a man. St. Viator trying to see if they can take their first lead of the game. It was Nutrier just seven minutes into the first period. That took the lead, and just in the waning parts of the second period, now shorthanded, here's Aiden Nolan. Nolan does this so often, in by himself with Hare. He scores! Splits the legs of Brock Hare. The shorthanded goal, it's 2-1, to one, New Trier. Not sure that was the shot you needed to take from the point. You had options to move the puck around, and Aiden Nolan makes you pay for it. He gets the puck. Slows it down, goes five hole west. We talked about it in the second period. That left pad doesn't hit the ice. You're gonna go five hole that time. It does come back to bite him. And Rudy, I think Nolan realized that Eddie was coming down, just doing some homework from some previous opportunities and able to beat, beat Brock Hare five hole there and give the Troy Vans the lead here early in the third. It was St. Vider's third shorthanded goal of the playoffs that got them tied. It's New Trier's third shorthanded goal of the playoffs that gets them back in front. How will St. Vider respond? Still have a minute and a half on the power play. Nutley drops it deep. Cuffle hustles to collect it below the goal. Cuffle fights through a check. Gets it far side. Voris now outside the circle. Nutley, that never got all the way to Schmidt. Trying to get it out off the boards, but Nutley keeps it in for the Lions. 
Munau in the corner. Battles with Fisk, gets back to the point. O'Neill fires, blocked in front. And Savino going to be able to chip it out to Fisk. Excuse me, Friel with the puck. Skates wide. He's just going to carry the puck, see if he can waste some time. But eventually, it's Nutley that correct, collects the puck for the Lions. Munau can't handle it, didn't realize he's got Nolan lurking again. Here's Aiden Nolan, shorthanded, draws his backhand, shoots. Oh, what a save by Hare. The snap of the wrist. We stay at 2-1. to one. Guys, you need to know where 65 and White is on the ice at all times. A great little toe drag to free himself up in space in the slot. And a cheeky play to go backhand there, but Brock Hare just snares it with the left hand to keep this thing 2-1. to one. He was moving to his right, just reached back, and obviously a shorthanded goal, not what Hare wanted to be. He's been fantastic. And the reason they're only down a goal has very much to do to 38 and blue. LeBoy not able to play it any for farther as Voris kicks it back into the zone. Nutrier thought it was offside, no call. Now Jacob Voris trying to collect. Randall able to get it out just past the blue line and loft this back in his own zone to collect. It's almost as if having the power play is a disadvantage. Two shorthanded goals, one on each side. Loftus avoids the check, able to get it deep. Now pinned against the boards. That's the end of the power play. Back to five on five as Hennigan hustles to join the play. Loftus goes across just behind Speck. Now Olsen with a chance. He's racing to catch up. Two on one. Pedraja drags the skate to stay on side. Hennigan follows up. Voris pressures the puck at the point. Randall does a nice job. Keep it in. Randall at a sharp angle, trying to get to the front of the net. Shane Randall not able to complete the move around the goal. LeBoy off the boards. Morris able to carry it out. Rink starting to fill up with York faithful and Wolfpack faithful. Special, special times here at the Edge Ice Arena. Semifinals. At this point, you start to get a mix of fans. The fans usually take a side. Start to cheer one way or the other, too. Face-off draw in the neutral zone. Munau plays it in towards Schmidt. Yasin trying to dig it out from behind the goal. Munau as well. Now Dolan comes to assist. Point blank. Munau shoots. Big right pad save. Schmidt. That was a reaction save all the way to keep the one goal lead for the Trevians. Might have been a lucky save if we're being honest. That pad was just there. He shot it right into it. It was a trailing leg. Couldn't lift the puck high enough to get the goal. Speck volleys it off the boards back out to center ice where Yasin collects for the Trevians. He saucers it forward to Chong, but over his stick. And Speck able to get back and collect for the Lions. He'll reverse flow. Robert Hoffman is going to leave for Kuffel. Hoffman tries a quick touch pass, not able to get it out. Kuffel goes to dig it out of the corner. Herstritt puts the pressure on. Herstritt pickpockets him. Here's Herstritt in the slot. O'Neill there on the stick check, not to let him any further. Centering pass right to the stick of Hoffman. Tries to go high with it out, but Yasin keeps it in at the far point. O'Neill feeds Hoffman. Hoffman, three on two, fires a shot, gets a rebound, but Nutley stumbled as he entered the zone, wasn't able to get a second chance. Here's Pacocha, his shot deflects wide. Fisk spins it around the boards. Pacocha pinches in to keep it in. Hoffman, that's a smart decision, just carries it out into the neutral zone, or Nutria might have been off. That hit somebody on the Nutria bench as it went in, kind of hard to tell why we got that whistle. See Nutley there, stumbled just a bit, wasn't able to get to that rebound opportunity. Draw is going to be to the left of Wyatt Schmidt. Not sure what the whistle was for, but maybe a fortuitous chance here for St. Vider in the offensive zone. Get some offense going and uh, get that equalizer that they're looking for. Now both benches getting an explanation, including Tim Benz, who I'm sure he's pretty thrilled about the outcome. Not sure you need to explain it to him. Yeah. 
Wes, not sure if you were able to hear what the referee was saying. I think the referee said it hit off of one of the new short players that was on the bench. That's why it's coming inside their defensive zone. So Vider gets a break, but not able to take advantage as Trevians are able to clear it all the way down ice. That'll be icing. Looks like Friel wanted a penalty there after getting crossed up. Not enough to really warrant a penalty, but I mean, you lobby for it, right? I mean, why not? If you don't ask, the answer is always no. Draw to come to the left of Schmidt. Once again, tied up. Friel takes it away, but Loris had his helmet ripped off, so we'll get a whistle. He'll come back in the Nutrier zone. Break for Vider, frankly, as Nutrier was off and running. We saw this in the combined game a couple days ago where a helmet was taken off and then the player had to be taken out of the game because the chin strap wasn't you know, put on correctly or whatever the case may be, and that might be the case. They might have to ask him to leave the ice, and I'm not really sure if they're allowed to change, but a referee has to make an exception here. The officials get together and determine that that face-off draw comes outside the neutral zone. Hibish, not able to control Loftus, turns. Just going to spin it back towards Schmidt into the neutral zone. Onto the stick of Savino. Touch pass Loftus. He's got Hennigan on his backside, but able to chip it out of the zone. Trying to get it past Hibbish. Hennigan draws to his backhand. Now to his forehand. Just misses that far post. Hare might have gotten a little piece of it. Nolan looks, shoots. Good stick by Voris. Deflects up into the netting. Offensive zone draw coming for Nutrier. I do not like that shot choice. I'm not sure if we'll get a better look here, but he had Hubes just streaking from the point with a lot of ice to work with. He could have very easily had made that pass and, you know, wide open lane for a chance. Uh, I'm not really sure what the decision making was there. Yeah, he looked like as he was coming off that cycle there, Rudy, he saw a wide open lane, but Morris able to crash there hard in the middle, get a stick on it. Finn Hogan below the goal, spins around to Kuffel. Off the boards, Hoffman finds the stick of Nutley. Nutley thought he had a step, but lost the puck. Puck pops out into the slot, but Randall collects it for Nutrier. Here's Randall, one on three. A stick lift from Hoffman slows him down. Now Kuffel at center ice. He fires it deep. O'Neill going to chase it on the four check. Pedraja, far corner. Goes up the middle of the ice, fortunate to get it up to Huber's stick. Eventually, Kuffel collects in the Vider zone. Kuffel misses Voris, comes to Fisk. Buck bouncing all over the place. Finally, Wolf able to flatten it. Centering pass, backhand Pedraja, not able to get a shot off. Pedraja looking, tries to go back below. Kuffel collects below the goal. Absorbs the check from Pedraja. Looking for Sibitroth on the break. Now Voris skates over to collect the puck. Voris, far circle, shoots. Follow on chance. Sibitroth can't get a follow. Rebound came right to Sibitroth, but it was on his backhand, so wasn't able to get much on it. Voris skating hard on this shift. And now we get a collision as a couple of players, it was Herstritt and Voris that went careening into the goal of Schmidt. That's twice that he loses his helmet. We'll see if uh, the officials force him to have to make some sort of adjustment, of course, for his own safety. You're going to get a great look here on that chance. He comes in, great save made, but it was Randall who comes in and denies that chance, partner. I mean, great defensive play. Otherwise, could have very easily had been 2-2, courtesy of that shot from Sibitroff. It's the little things in playoff hockey. Shane Randall skating hard, 200 feet. Make sure that he doesn't give his opportunity to the Lion side. We say it all the time. First save's got to be on the goalie. Second save's got to be on his defense. Showing it there. Absolutely. I mean, the first one, a little dicey. You know, he probably wants that rebound back. He probably felt like he could have put that in a better place or even maybe squeezed it if he was just a touch to his right. So either way, Schmidt gets bailed out, but he's been bailing them out all day long. So. A little, a little give and a little get for the netminder and the defenseman. Loftus and Savino now having a conversation with the linesman. We've had two or three minute pause of play here between the collision and the goal. The 
Helmet of Voris, and now a conversation with the linesman. Clean win for the Trevians. Friel gets it back to Savino, tosses it off the glass. Matthew Voris gets it up to Dolan, who plays it deep, looking for Munau on the forecheck. Puck pops out right in front of Schmidt, drops his glove on it. The Lions will have an offensive zone draw. Ooh, Schmidt really likes to come out and cover the puck there, man. That is a really dangerous play. We saw it in the first period, but right there, I'm not sure that's the time and place, but I guess when you're up by one, you got to make those decisions. Yeah, something you got to make quick, too, and I think he's just trying to slow the game down a little bit here, give his team some time to breathe and relax here as we wind down in this third period. Now a draw to the right of Schmidt. Back to the point, Voris. Speck gets checked, puts it below to Loftus. Spun around the boards, but Voris is catching up to it. Near half all over Candy. No, he misses it. And now racing is Nolan. Nolan getting pushed by Munau. Speck uses his stick to drive him off the puck. Loftus can't get it to Hennigan. Falls to Yassin. Yassin's shot high and wide. Dowen coming back. And now we get a whistle. An elbowing call against Speck. Guys, I didn't see it either. It was behind the play. Excuse me, Loftus with the two-minute minor. And the, the Lions bench is furious, as they should be. I don't know about that one, guys. I mean, that, that's twice that they kind of get called for something that is just playoff hockey. I mean, it's not even like their emotions are getting the better of them. But, uh, you know, there's a shortage of stripes, so we'll be kind. But I'm not sure if uh, I agree with those two calls. So New Trier with a huge opportunity here in the final 10 minutes. As West goes flying. Wes, you got your backup Tendy down there protecting you or what? <laughs> yeah, Gar's in front of you, but you talk about the crowd. There's some New Trier fans down to my left, so it's hard to see this corner down to my left as well. Barely saw that puck coming in. Had to get those old goalie reflexes tuned in there pretty quickly. They never go away, right, Wes? It comes right back to you. Speck, able to get it up to O'Neill and out of the zone. They never go away, but they just come back a little slower over the years, <laughs> right? Here's Hibbish. Nolan, rink wide, not able to catch up to it. Kuffel tries to backhand it out of the zone, but force forward. Now Chong and Nolan battle, along with Kuffel. Still battling with Chong. Physical play, Chong's able to win it, gets it up top, Hibbish. Hibbish decides the conservative play, turns, fires, gets a deflection, just wide of the near post. Kuffel checks Chong. Wolf gets it back to Nolan at the near point. Nolan across Hibbish, drops to Friel. Friel below the goal, Savino. Savino looks for the back door, it's intercepted by Speck, now a shot, Speck blocks it again. Friel tries a centering pass, but Speck all over it. Now Savino looks. He tries a point-blank chance, looking for Chong to flex and out of the zone. Ryder in a slow change, and offside the call against New Trier. Nick Chiapetta all over it. Nick Chiapetta, of course, former high school hockey coach, good friend of the network. Working that line closest to Wes. Johnny on the spot, makes the call, offsides. Yeah, Wes, it's only the love of the armbands that we uh, are not giving too much credit, right? We, lo we love the linesmen. As you said, there's a shortage <laughs> of uh, stripes out there, so we'll go easy on the guys tonight. 40 seconds remain on the new Trier man advantage. Eight minutes in the game. Here's Randall. Drops for Fisk. Rice was there to try to dispossess. Spun around the boards. Hennigan far half wall. Hennigan shakes Nutley. Randall was creeping in back door. Comes up top, Yassin. Yasin shoots, blocked shot by Rice, forced back out into the neutral zone. Randall goes rink wide, Savino not able to control. Nutley checks Hennigan off the puck, and now put, checked into the boards looking for boarding, no call. Ryder bench furious. Power play over for Nutrier, back to five on five. Expensive piece of firewood down on the ice with the broken stick. Randall able to keep it in at the point. Randall high slot, looks back door, Hennigan, he scores! Brendan Hennigan makes it three to one. Insurance comes to the hands of Hennigan. Didn't look like he got all of it, 
but he got just enough to put it past the netminder. Huge goal to give them a two goal lead. Not sure if there's gonna be a little extra after, a little bit of a cheap shot from Nutrier to the numbers. Not sure if the officials saw it. Hare had got a piece of it, but wasn't able to glove it completely. Finds its way in the back of the net. You get a look at the jubilation on the new Trier bench. Tim Benz now having a conversation with the referee. I think he saw what you saw, and he feels like they missed the boarding down here, the penalty after down to our right. A frustrated St. Vider bench right now. Guys, yeah, they look like to be a clear miss on a slash against Vider. Rice lost his stick. That's the lumber that you alluded to being on the middle of the ice. Looked like an obvious slash that went miss there, but we're going to play on. 7.15 remaining in the third period. Vider now finds themselves down two goals for the first time in the game. Stretch pass, Huber's just gonna play it deep and go for a change. Hogan picks up the puck below the goal. LeBoy turns and fires, turns it over. Now going hard into the boards was Luke Chu. He's a little ginger getting up. Luke Chu and some, he is uncomfortable laboring to get back to the bench. Is 19 and white. LeBoy. Up to Sibitroth, he deflects and gets it deep. Luke Chu is in some serious discomfort as he gets back to the new Trier bench. Big time concern, a huge part of this new Trier attack. Savino gets the puck in the near circle, leads the rush for the Trevians. Rink wide, Hurstritt leaves for Savino. Savino between the legs, checked off the puck. It's back in the corner, Nutley. Tries to play it off the glass, but kept in at the point by Chong. Chong wraps around the goal, looking for Nolan, but an active stick from Voris. Make sure that pass doesn't get completed. And volleyed off the boards and out. Here's Chong, coming up the middle of the ice. Active stick from Voris, slows the rush. Loftus takes over for St. Vider. Off the skate of Munau, fouled on by Dolan. Five and a half to go, down two. We'll start to keep our eyes to our right. Still a little bit early, I would think, to consider pulling the goaltender, but I'd say here in the next minute and a half to two minutes, you might see it. You gotta start to take chances. I mean, you're down two with five minutes left in a winner-take-all game to go to the UC. You gotta just roll the dice, start taking those chances, start taking risks. If that means pulling the netminder with uh, maybe four, net, four to three and a half minutes, then you gotta do it. I mean, tough hill to climb against a really tough team. Trevians win the draw cleanly. Here's Huber. Shoots, pad save, left in the middle of the slot. Hare with another save as that puck almost fluttered over his shoulder into the goal. Wolf pins a man against the boards. That's O'Neill. That, I believe hit the glove of a Vider Lion, so it's going to be an offensive zone draw coming on the right draw. Now Randall delivers a shot. Nutley involved in it, as it seems like every time there's a skirmish, Sean Nutley's in the middle of it. Yeah, that's kind of what he's there for, right? He's the spark plug. He's the guy that, you know, a little bit of an instigator, if you will, as you get a good look at the two saves from Hare on your screen. Sometimes when you need a momentum shift, that's the kind of guy that gives you the spark, and you either love him or you hate him, but you want him on your team. That's a little a la Brad Marchand. No doubt about it. He had the... Lone goal so far for the Lions on that shorthanded breakaway. He's looking for more magic as he absorbs a check from Huber. Now Pedraja, not able to handle the puck. Doesn't go far enough for icing. Hoffman tries to slow it down. Not able to make a play on it for St. Vider. Hoffman collects in his own zone inside of five minutes. O'Neill skates. He sh shoots, but Randall slows it down, steers it wide. Cuffle ran at center ice. Throws it deep. And offsides the call. It looks like they got away with an interference there. And Coach Benz, again, very vocal about missing it. 
Wes, you're down at ice level. You're right next to him. I mean, the energy's got to be shifting. Yeah, it's good. I don't know if you guys can tell, but he's red down here. There's three or four, I feel like, in the last four or five minutes that he feels like the, this, the, the officials have missed. So see if they're able to, you know, even things up here, give uh, Viator uh, a power play or some of the being here as we finish off yeah. this game. Fens has certainly been working the official trying to get a call. Here's Hennigan. High slot. He scores! Brendan Hennigan rips one from the slot. Makes it four to one. Hennigan again waves goodbye to the crowd as they are inching closer and closer to the UC. A beautiful shot when you make the iron sing like that. Typically that is a sign of an absolute snipe. That time he just enters the zone, fools everybody with that shot. It's a rifle. Four to one Trevians. Gonna get a good look at it here on our goal cam. And he just beats hair. Skating left, shoots right, he beats him. Ryder takes a timeout, down three with 4.15 to go. And New Trier on their way to the United Center. You just knew Hennigan was going to show up. One of your big time players showing up when it matters the most. Tied for third in the SHL in points for the Trevians all season long. And, you know, they needed him to step up, and he gets two, three, uh, two insurance goals here in the third period. And as a result, they're just four minutes, 15 seconds away from going to the United Center. So Vider going to try to make a push. Hennigan, the last two goals, the captain coming through. You just pointed out, Rudy, you look for those moments in the semifinal game to push your team to the United Center. Viner going to try desperately here. I would think as soon as they get some possession in the offensive zone, they'll pull the goal of Brock Hare, who was spectacular in those first two periods. Viner has not been able to find enough offense to stay in the game to this point. There goes Hare, starts to skate towards the bench. Not able to get full possession, so Tim Benz keeps him in there for the moment. That'll miss everybody. That'll go for icing. So I would assume now Hare is going to get pulled. It's like a little bit of a conversation being had if they are going to pull him, and they are. So Hare will make his way to the bench. I thought they were going to wait for maybe a face-off win in their own zone. Maybe that's what the conversation was down there. Yeah, Rudy, some coaches like to wait until their team gets possession before they pull the goalie. But Tim Benz rolling the dice here, trying to get that sixth attacker on as soon as possible. Offensive zone draw coming for St. Vider. Draw to the left of Schmidt. Six attackers on the ice for St. Vider. It'll be O'Neill and David Wolf. O'Neill tries to go straight forward. Hoffman collects below the goal. Centering pass. Nutley not able to get anything on it. Speck shot deflected by Hoffman. That goal just off its post, and we get a whistle. Great save on the redirection there by the netminder Schmidt. Had to be sharp. It was just redirected in midair there from Hoffman and then net the slodge, no problem. He's square, makes the save, hits the NT on his chest. 3.44 to go. And Trier trying to get back to the United Center. For a bid at back-to-back -back state championships. Now empty net, Pedraja, backhand shot, just misses the goal off the post. Nutley collects. Nutley stretch pass, Munau. Munau avoids the hit, gets the puck into the offensive zone. O'Neill avoids Savino. O'Neill centering pass, backdoor Nutley off the post. Sean Nutley looking for a second, wouldn't get it, couldn't get it to go. Here's O'Neill, whiffs on the shot. Munau across to Voris. Near point, Voris shoots, that deflects up into the netting. Experience the excitement of high school hockey at the United Center on Wednesday, March 13th, as the Amateur Hockey Association of Illinois and the Chicago Blackhawks proudly present the 2024 Illinois State High School Hockey Championships in partnership with Richard Group. Cuts three thrilling championship matchups showcasing the talent of Illinois rising hockey stars. Secure your tickets now 
at blackhawks.com slash HS championships. Well, if you're a new Trier fan, you might want to save that link. 254 from needing to buy some tickets. We'll of course be there. Just five days from now. We'll have the girls game at 3.30, the combined varsity game at 5.30, and then the nightcap as this puck takes a perfect bounce off the boards and in the shorthanded goal. New Trier goes up five to one. Well, for the Trevians, this is where they belong. This is what they envisioned from the very onset of the season. They knew that they had a strong team. They won the SHL, and now they are one step closer to winning their double via the state championship. Let's be real here. They dominated all night long. The score was close, but they pulled away in the third, and those heavy legs for St. Viter, very, very present. The Lion Faithful starts to head for the exits as a semifinal appearance, nothing to sneeze at. They play great playoff hockey. A convincing win over GBN on Sunday. So they'll sit back after this one as Stay tuned, folks. We're just getting started here at the Edge Ice Arena. There's a shot on goal. Schmidt keeps it out. LeBoy tries a second attempt. Buck still bouncing around. Morris tries to drop it to his stick. Not able to, but just getting started. We'll have St. Ignatius and York, the six and seven seeds, pulled upsets in the round of eight. Here's another shot. Hare keeps it out. But really excited for that matchup coming up. The York student section, already a couple hundred deep. We had for the quarterfinal game on a Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock. Had a ton of York faithful here Friday night, semifinal. They're going to keep piling in. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, th this is the environment that people just love. You got students, you have alumni, you have a lot of parents, obviously, friends and family, all through the magic of the uh, a high state tournament. For so Saint kudos Vi to them. For St. Viner, it was a fifth place finish in the SHL. Got themselves here to this semifinal. Think about guys like Sean Nutley and Cuffle, part of that state championship appearance. They'll round out their careers. A lot to be proud of in a lion sweater. Come up short here in the semifinals. Randall takes the puck. New Trier looking for state championship number 17. That's New Trier Green. Of course, won a couple before the combination of the two schools. But officially for New Trier Green, they'll be vying for their 17th state championship in 21 appearances. Pretty good clip. I'd say so. <laughs> Final minute of play. James Rice brings it forward. Of course, New Trier, number one seed, will be the home team at the United Center. We'll get the fortunate privilege of being able to use the Blackhawks locker room. You know, you're the top seed, number one seed, number one team in the state. Not only do you get final change, you get to change in the same lockers as Connor Bedard. That's pretty cool. I actually did not know that, Max. It's a pretty neat uh, little incentive to be in the higher seed. No doubt about it. Here's Voris. Of course, last year, New Trier. Won the state championship two to nothing over York Cool Seed in just about 20 minutes. Final seconds take off the clock. Five to one, New Trier. Hoffman gonna try to get one off the glove of Schmidt. Hoffman once more near circle. His shot blocked. Waning seconds. There's the buzzer. New Trier wins five to one. One step closer are the Trevians. Business as usual, not, not a whole lot of celebrating. They're happy, a lot of smiles and hugs, but for them, they know the job is not finished. They are one step closer to back-to-back -back state championships, and well, Max, you're starting to see why. Top to bottom, complete, deep, very talented 
St. Vider put up a fight, but the Trevians just a little too much for the Lions. Two teams meet at center ice, shake hands, and Nutrier punches ticket number one to the United Center. One more ticket available. It'll be York for St. Ignatius. We got Wes Anderson down on ice level. He'll get some sound from some players and coaches post game. Rudy, it was a, a great response in the final. Couple of seconds of the second period. But ultimately, Nutrier with a huge, huge third period gets four unanswered, and they'll head to the United Center. Got to give a lot of credit to St. Viator. Brock Hare had a fabulous season. He has been so strong, and for him, it, it, it's a sour, sour taste in his mouth, but. He could hold his head up high and say that, hey, he gave his team a fighting chance. Could have very easily had been, goodness gracious, 5-1 at the end of two periods. So a credit to Brock Hare and his team. I mean, a lot of talent top to bottom. Boris, Civic Trough, Hoffman, LaBoy. A lot to be proud of for this group, but Nutrier getting it done. Wes Anderson has Brendan Hennigan. Two goals on the game, Wes. Guys, thanks, Brendan. You guys are able to go back to back in terms of making your way to the state finals. Just talk about the journey of this group throughout the year. Uh, I mean, it's been a great journey. We faced so much adversity as a group. I'm just really proud of the way we've stepped up the past like 10 games or so. Really showing how we are as a team. You talk about stepping up. Drew Durdoff and Wyatt Schmidt, a great one-two punch back there. Wyatt Schmidt, 26 saves tonight. Talk about your goal today and how they've been so pivotal to this team throughout the year. They're unreal. They're the best two team, two goalies in the, in the state. And they just keep us in every game, and, it, and we're really blessed to have them. Yeah. All right, go enjoy with the teammates. Right, we'll see you, you in the next it. See you, buddy. An excited Brendan Hennigan, the captain. We got the chance to talk to him at the kickoff at the barn all the way back in October. He was confident. He was now the captain, the leader of this team after winning a state championship last year. He saw his excitement. We'll send it right back to the ice level. Wes has Adam Cheris. Wes. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Here we go. Biner's able to find a goal late in that second period. What was your message to your team in the second intermission? Hey, it's a 1-1 game. We felt like we were controlling the pace pretty well. We've been in those games before. Third period's our period. We knew that. Got a lot of seniors. Talked in the locker room about this is not how we go out. They rose up, had an outstanding third period. Love the way they responded. You talk about this is not how we go out. You guys won the state championship last year. You're headed back to the UC again this year. How do you draw your experience from last year to, to solidify this year and get the second state championship? Yeah, well, we got a lot of guys who were there who are on this team, and they know what it's like. They're telling all the young guys what it's like. Everybody wants it. They are dying for this. These guys are trying to do better than any other team that we've had. I love the attitude. I love the energy. Uh, you know, we're going to go right from that. We're going to play every game the same way. York and Iggy, both great teams. You know, either one scares me. All right, Coach, we'll see you at the UC. <laughs> All right, we'll see you, Wes. Thanks. All right, guys, back up to you. Thank you, Wes. They may scare him, but he's the one that gets to go have a beer, sit back, and enjoy this second game. Rudy, final thoughts? Well, I, I can say that this game was a lot closer than the score indicates. Great overall effort from both these teams, but it's Nutria back where they belong and back to the state championship. That will do it for us for game one. We'll take about a 15 minute break, flip over to the other YouTube link for St. Ignatius and York coming up. I want to thank our great crew as we always do. We had Matt Freeman, Joel Schneider, and Matt Budin. Our good friend Matt Budin back on camera for us here in the state semifinals. Good to see him. Of course, we had Gerard Boris as a technical assistant. Jimmy the Wiz Olsen cutting all the graphics, the great looks, folks. You don't get high school hockey coverage like this anywhere else. Jimmy the Wiz Olsen, the technical brains behind it. Wes Anderson down on ice level. Rudy Hudson to my right. I am Max Anderson. Thank you so much for tuning into game one. Take a quick break. Come back with game two. York, St. Ignatius coming up. Take a quick break. Talk to you then.